That's all the applause that Marcos deserves. Right there. Rockford, how you guys doing? There we go. I love coming here. I love performing here. It's such a great crowd. I'm just glad, so stoked to see so many uh, new faces. I'm surprised that they actually let me in here. Uh, not because I'm white, but because I look like I've ever, like I, like every guy that's ever been in every episode of Cops ever. All right, that's why I look like. I have a full button-down shirt. I have a full beard. I have a hat. I look like the cops just paraded in my trailer park this morning. That's why. And, and whenever you see that guy on Cops, you don't even want to know why, the, why he's they're there in the first place. All you go do is like, hey, take his ass in. You know? And then you actually find out that he's the one that called the cops, so you act like you're jipped off. Like, uh, Florida Bowl won't just show anymore. Man. Cops reruns, man. It's it's nuts. That's a, that's the only thing that you ever see at three o'clock in the morning anymore. That and uh, workout videos. But I'm too drunk to figure out what the hell they're trying to do as I'm eating my Taco Bell. So that's not a good idea. Valentine's Day. We just celebrated Valentine's Day. Got we have one fan to Valentine's Day. Sounds about right. Who's a woman too? That's a bullshit holiday. You wanna know how I know? Because here's how I celebrate my Valentine's Day. I'm a single, fat, white man. Here's what I did. My dad came to town. We went out to the bar the night before Valentine's Day. And I started talking to the bartender, trying to get a new drink. My dad comes up and goes, hey, there's no ring. My name's Tommy. How are you doing? And then, she, and he, then he goes ahead and finds out her work schedule. Finds out she's working the next night. He goes, hey, maybe we'll come back. You know, try to play it off like white folks do. But we don't. We look retarded. We're like, we might come back. We might. And they're secretly hoping, no, I don't ever. And then the next, and then uh, I get called from them the next night on Valentine's Day going, hey, you should totally come pick me up at my parents' house so we can go and grow some chips. Hallmark doesn't make that damn card. I checked. Ah, that's my life. My life is so screwed up that actually my dad came to my last show. I told that joke. He laughed, and my, uh, my aunt, who was sitting next to him, who's uh, uh, a lesbian and a former lumberjack, thought this joke was hilarious. <laughs> Marco's better. She, he knows I'm not lying. Looks like a lumberjack, too. I introduced her as my uncle. <laughs> That's nuts. Um, I, actually just, uh, I actually just stopped living with friends because that was the biggest mistake I could ever make. It was, it was very intriguing, though. My friend and his fiance opened up their house to me. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, I actually got to observe. Uh, I've always been single for a long time, man. You know, yeah, figure. And uh, I've been, I actually got to see and observe women in their natural habitat. And by that, I mean, I actually got to watch my friend's fiance watch Teen Mom. And that, if you ever get a chance to watch a woman watch Teen Mom, is fucking retarded. It's, it's, uh, it's awesome, but it, it just... Makes you want to go, you know, eat a gun. Uh, we're watching this, and watching her watch this, and she's going ahead and she's just enthralled with these four women and their lives. Like, it's going to have some bearing on her. And all of a sudden, one of the dogs of the people that they're following dies, and she starts to cry. I said, you're, you realize you're crying because of a dead dog you saw on Teen Mom on music television, right? And she's like, Yeah. Said none of that shit makes sense to me. And then she calls her dog, which is a full grown boxer, and this woman's four foot ten, uh, invites the boxer onto, this, onto the couch because she has to snuggle with it. And by snuggle, I mean a legal MMA chokehold. And I, I'm like, I'm going to bed. So I started going to bed, and a uh, friend goes, Hey, have you seen my fiance? I said, I have no idea where Alicia went, but. Uh, Sarah McLaughlin's on the couch trying to raise money for ASPCA. I think it's like a $10 donation to sit on the couch anymore. So I got kicked out. Especially after she found that joke on YouTube. That was fun. It was like an airbench. What's this? Something that got some laughs. That's what. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I actually did have a girlfriend for a little while. A brief little while. Uh, she broke up with me through uh, Facebook. Yeah, and, and that's like the worst possible way that you could ever dump somebody. At least do it through a text message so I can erase it and say I never got it and still act like we're together. That way when I see you with another guy, I can call you a whore in public and not feel bad about it. Like, that would be the better way. And, uh, but no, she's 
spoke up with me through Facebook, and I gotta tell you, that put a really bad damper on my Disney movie night. <laughs> Because towards the end of Aladdin, I didn't give a shit if, if Aladdin and Jasmine got together. Because my girlfriend loved me. Ah, oh, man. What are some more jokes I could tell about how white I am? Let's figure this one out. Ah, oh, here's one. Went down to, uh, I recently played with uh, a couple of the comics here at a show in uh, Beloit. Uh, and that was fun. I had a great time. Uh, but I got kind of drunk, and I decided... That there was a very lovely uh, black girl that I was going to try and hit on. And that was perfect. Everything was going great. I'm not sure why I lost her, though. It could have been the part where I said, I will make you love white men by morning. That might have gotten her to uh, leave or avoid her attention from me. But it didn't. Could have been the part where I uh, called her my little Nubian queen. No? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know why I said to her. I was, I was pretty hammered at that point. And, you know, maybe I could have just said, well, we can bring out the whips and chains. I don't know. And, and have her call me Toby or something. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Jokes, they're jokes, they're jokes. Don't kill me. Rockford. Uh, I actually did uh, start online dating. Uh, that was a, a really bad time in my life. It still is. And uh, what's really bad is, who, who here has actually tried online dating? We have one, nice, one, two, three, four, yeah, we're counting here. Okay, four. And what's really nice is, that if you ever do, don't, don't go on POF, I thought that was the best one. <laughs> you know why? Because women like to lie, and that was not news to me. However, women lying with pictures was news to me. Because when they say that they're average body type, yet I go up to the photos, and they can't get all the way in the photo. It makes me think that they're talking about the average body size of a humpback whale. Ah, oh, crazy, crazy. And then uh, I started getting all these messages from girls in Dubuque, Iowa. I was like, man, I gotta be better than every guy in Dubuque, Iowa. So I went out there and I met these women. I spent time with these women. After that, I found out I'm not better than every guy in Dubuque, Iowa. It's a, every guy in Dubuque, Iowa looked at him and said, pass. <laughs> yeah. Passed him on to a different state, fucker. Thank you. I mean, he drove two hours to go see him. And then, the worst date I possibly could have. I, uh, I met a girl here in Rockford. I picked her up. I went to, uh, I took her to hockey. She said she was a big hockey fan. And then, as we get to the stadium, she tells me, Oh, I'm afraid of uh, parking garages. Well, you're going to have to get over it tonight. <laughs> so we park in the parking garage. Then she tells me, Oh, I'm afraid of, uh, I'm afraid of elevators. Really? Oh, I'm afraid of alleys. Really? Like, this woman has some sort of, uh, of fear that I'm going to rape her by the end of the night. I am a fat man. When have you ever seen a fat man rape anyone? Like, you never see us as a prime suspect on that Law & Order SBU or CSI. It's just not the way it's going to happen. Worst day of my life, especially when we sat in our seats, and she sat down, and I tried to sit down, but I was, I was stuck, because she was taking up a quarter of my seat, and uh, it was bad. I, t I just drove her home at the end of the night. I was kind of hungry, but I wasn't going to say anything, because I didn't have that much money. <laughs> so I drove, her, I drove her home, and the next day all my, uh, I work with uh, all these married people, and they're like, dude, how's your date? I said, it went farther than I thought it was going to go. But did you get laid? Nope, but I didn't leave her at the arena either. <laughs> Thank you guys, that's my time. Have a good night, and God bless.